We own them. H how many congressional offices did you actually own? <laughs> uh... Jack Abramoff may be the most notorious and crooked lobbyist of our time. Today, he's a symbol of how money corrupts Washington. I had two people on my staff whose virtual full-time job was booking tickets. The best tickets to all the area's sporting events and junkets to the world's great golf destinations, food and drinks on the house, access to private jets. Uh, and the congressman or senator could take his favorite people from his district to the, the congressman or senator uh, could take uh, two dozen of his favorite people. Was all that legal? At times we didn't care. Abramoff targeted Volz and offered him a job. You're the chief of staff of a powerful congressman and Jack owns you and you haven't even left working for the congressman. We were guilty of engaging in a corrupt relationship so there were several corrupting moments. There isn't just one moment, there were many. You could own the office by offering a job to the chief of staff, say, I'm having two reactions. One is brilliant, and the other is I'm sick to my stomach. Right, evil. Everything that we want, they're gonna do. And not only that, they're gonna think of things we can't think of to do. Subverting the essence of yes, our system. Absolutely right, but our system is flawed and has to be fixed. There are lots of things in Washington that would seem to be illegal, but really aren't if you know your way through the loopholes. When Congress passed the Ethics Reform Act of 1989, it plainly stated a member shall convert no campaign funds to personal use. But soon afterwards, congressional leaders quietly invented something called leadership PACs, political action committees that were not technically campaign funds and thus exempt from the personal use prohibition. This is a loophole. Right. Today, nearly every congressman and senator has a leadership pact, not just the leaders. It's like a political slush fund. That's exactly what it is. It's a political slush fund. Over time, we've had them. They've been outlawed. They spring back in new guises. This is the latest guise. Senator John Edwards used his leadership pact to pay his mistress, Riel Hunter, $114,000 to make a campaign video. And Republican Congressman Andrew Crenshaw of Florida spent $32,000 hosting a tour of California wineries for a group of contributors from the defense industry, which he has some oversight of. The Federal Election Commission has called the level of abuse substantial. When folks are asked for campaign donations and when they make campaign donations, I don't think they have any idea that some of that money is actually going into the member's personal bank account. Another example, unfortunately, where the rules that apply to the rest of us uh, don't really apply to members of Congress. 